Before we get into this episode, I definitely want to just go ahead and do a medical disclaimer. Nothing that I share on this podcast or on this particular episode is to treat, cure, or diagnose any medical condition. Please take all of those concerns that you may have to your doctor. I am not an expert. (laughs) I am not a doctor. I am just someone who is sharing things for informational purposes only. So please consult your doctor. You're listening to the Style and Stewardship Podcast. So what is stewardship? That is exactly what we'll be talking about in each and every episode of this podcast. As Christ followers, I think it's so important that we manage every single area of our lives to the best of our ability. Not perfectly, but intentionally in our own unique way and holding on to God's grace every single step of our journey. On this podcast, I'll be sharing thoughts, things that God's teaching me, and transparent talks. My hope is that when you listen, you'll feel equipped, you'll be encouraged, and more than anything, I hope that you're inspired to live out your day-to-day calling in your own unique way. This podcast is for the woman who wants to hear, well done. Whenever we are working on any sort of goal or we have desires about certain things, it is super, super important that we weed out the things that are going to um, be detrimental to those goals or that are going to be hindrances or hurdles to that goal. And one of the things that I think we don't talk about enough or we don't, um, you know, intentionally do enough is to really focus and point out those things first that need to be uprooted and removed. So, you know, it's like, I'm going to go and I'm going to plant. I always use this gardening thing. I don't know why, but um, analogy. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to plant a garden. But before I plant that garden, I need to make sure that the environment is right for that particular thing to grow in. Um, You know, farmers use almanacs and they have for years. And this is just a collection of this wisdom over time of stewarding the land and recognizing what will grow well where. You know, everything does not grow well in every condition. So there are different things like zoning. So um, gardeners and farmers would have, you know, there's a whole almanac system where it tells you what kind of zone you live in. So it might be a two whatever or seven or eight or six, and then there'll be like an A and B. And then this will give you the, um, you know, based on someone else's wisdom that has been tried and true for the most part of what things will grow well in certain areas. So environments matter. Not just the environment, but also the condition of the environment. So the environment, is it an urban environment? Is there going to be a lot of exhaust fumes, a lot of, you know, all different types of things that come with city living? What kind of soil will that have? Well, since a lot of the, you know, natural, you know, trees and different things like that have been, you know, moved, (laughs) removed, um, relocated in different types of soil and dirt have been brought in and different things are covering a lot of that. So there is a native soil in that area. So um, there could be like red clay dirt. There could be like really um, sandy um, environments. There can be. So my point in saying all of that is there are going to be different environments and different conditions of that soil. The same goes for us when we are trying to have a healthy goal and have a, you know, a health and wellness goal. We have this healthy life that we want to live. How do we live that? How do we do that if we do not know what we're working with, what that environment is like, and what we need to plant there in order to reap this harvest, this goal that we want in our health and our wellness? It is no different than planting a garden. We can't just go out and sow seeds wherever and hope that they grow. A pineapple tree is, for example, I'm not living in a a tropical environment. Therefore, it's going to be really difficult, if not impossible, for me to grow a pineapple tree to full maturity. There are certain things that are not going to work in certain environments and in certain conditions. It is the same way when we go and we want to just take a pill for every ill without first recognizing that the foundation, the soil, is not right 
to even harvest that goal that we are after. So why are we, you know, and then and then the the timing matters, right? You don't plant just anything in any soil in any environment, aka condition at any point in time of the year. There are certain things that you will not harvest. You will not be able to reap or harvest because it does not belong in the area that you're trying to plant it in. And not just that, it's not, it shouldn't even, for example, like that time of year, frost will kill certain things. They won't even get to maturity. They won't even sprout because they are not um, things that, you know, for the fall, for example, there are certain things that do not grow above ground when it is cold. But they will do just fine when underneath the ground or when started after the first frost. So that can be things like a quote unquote winter um, squash. It's called a winter squash because you harvest it in the winter because you planted it beforehand. And then when spring is coming, you plant things, certain plants after the first frost. There are certain things that grow decently in winter weather because they can handle frost. I'm not an expert on gardening. You'll have to talk to my mom about about that. But I see so many similarities and so many um, just parables. Like, really, there's so many parables with just looking at how the land is and, and how we can, you know, focus on what needs to grow, what can grow, what we should even attempt to grow. But first, we have to use the wisdom and the discernment of what grows well here is this the right time, aka season, literally? And also, are there, these the right conditions for this thing to even grow into what I'm working with, what I'm trying to grow? And I think that it's so important that we do that with our wellness, because if we are constantly in situations where we're just throwing pills at things, or we're just going and, and we're asking advice about how to grow something, like, I'm not going to go to a mechanic and ask them how to grow an apple tree. And I think a lot of times we're doing that with our wellness. And I encourage you all the time, obviously, go to the doctor. This is not medical advice. This is my opinion. These are just my thoughts. Um, obviously, consult a medical professional. Don't change anything that you're doing without com- consulting them. Disclaimer. But we also are, who is in your body 24-7? Who is walking in your shoes 24 7 i i'm always encouraging people to be their own health and wellness advocate because who better to do it than the person who knows it best but we have gotten so detached from what our body needs we have gotten so detached from really what it takes to even steward this body we've gotten so detached from what actual food is and we wonder why we're sick I'm going to use my husband, for example, and I don't think he'll mind this, which I use him, for example, for a lot of things. <laughs> but he's been talking about how tired he's been, how tired he's been. And I said to him in the most loving way that I could, babe, um, you're only getting six hours of sleep at night and you're waking up to go to the gym and then you're working a 10 hour day. OK, like seriously, he knows this, but sometimes we have to say these things out loud because we can just go and go and go. And we're doing all these things that we want for the goal of having, you know, our body look a certain way, our health to be in a certain way. However, if the thing that we need most, we're not getting, how can we expect the outcome that we desire? How can I expect to feel well if I'm not feeding my body the things that it needs to do that? How can it feel well? How? Will it just miraculously feel well? No, let's just add a little more caffeine. If I feel tired and run down, let me just add a little more more caffeine because I just need to get going. No, your body needs fuel. Your body needs food. Your body needs what it determined as food, not what a company has. And I get really, really passionate about all of this stuff because I see it all over my family. I see it all over and all over my lineage, you know, where there's just so much sickness and there's so little education on what food is what feels good in our bodies what helps our bodies to feel well and there's such a detachment where let's go to the doctor if we feel unwell it's 
the same thing. And, and you should, if you feel sick, go to the doctor. Um, that is your, you know, your privilege, your prerogative, your, your right. However, is this something that will pass? Is this something that just needs rest? Is this something that things are out of balance in my body? And the more and more I'm learning about nutrition and, and our bio, uh, you know, our bio individuality, and also the bio availability of some of the things that we're eating, for example, that are called quote unquote proteins or things that are carbohydrates or all of these things that the body actually needs, we are not well versed in what that looks like. We are not well versed in what it means to live a healthy lifestyle apart from a grilled chicken salad and maybe a bunch of water. We have equated that to wellness or a green drink or eating a bowl of oatmeal. And I'm not saying that those things are bad or wrong or that they're not quote unquote healthy, but we do a lot of things out of context and we do a lot of things out of context for what it means for us to individually to be healthy. So if we have this goal of, you know, for my husband of feeling rested, first he needs to get some rest, right? This is not something we can't throw caffeine at a lack of sleep. We cannot throw sugar at a lack of energy. Sometimes we can, but you get what I'm saying. We cannot just sprinkle these things on top of the habits that we have and hope that it's going to be like a jack in the beanstalk situation where we're going to plant these beans and it's going to grow up into this massive thing of having this great, amazing, expansive health and wellness. It does not work like that. And the older we get, the more support our body actually needs, not less. So this means that we have to learn how to support our bodies, but we have to learn what that looks like for us. I know too many people who have gotten things, you know, have gone straight to, have gone to an extreme as opposed to starting with where they are and true foundations. So before, you know, for my husband, before we talk about, you know, you're not, you know, you're, you, you don't know why you, you, you feel so tired and you feel so awful and all of these things, which lowers your body's um, ability to fight diseases and pathogens. Keep that in mind. When we are run down, we are impairing our immune system. Anyways, that's a whole nother topic. But as we are, you know, not getting rest or not getting nutrients or we're eating the same things over and over where our body is screaming for diversity, the diversity of, of nutrients and the diversity of vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and all of those things that we get from a variety of foods. We're doing the same thing day in and day out. And we all know what that is. You know, the old quote, right, is like doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. And we are driving ourselves crazy in our health and our wellness because we think that we can just sprinkle things on once in a blue that is going to just amass us this amazing fountain of health and wellness and feeling great and feeling vibrant and feeling rested. If you are not sleeping at night, you will not be rested, you will not feel rested. And the body wants to maintain homeostasis, which is that place of balance. And if it cannot get there, then other things get thrown off as well. And I'm a huge believer in the fact that if our body is out of balance, so will all of its processes and functions. And we don't think about it like that. We think about it like, oh, I'm going to eat a salad and I had some oatmeal and I got six hours of sleep, but I exercised. And we constantly work against ourselves, our physiology, um, our biology. So often we're working against it and we don't know what our body needs because we're not slowing down long enough to ask the right questions or we're going to extremes as opposed to starting with foundations. And I often think that we 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 lean towards extremes because of we want something right now 
and we want relief right now. So we're going to grab the thing right now, you know, or we're going to go to the doctor right now. Um, and we don't give our time, our bodies this space to even get back into balance. And since we live in this culture and that we have created, mind you, of wanting things so conveniently and so quickly that we are disregarding the fact that there are certain things that we have to sow in order to get that. And sowing from the point of sowing and reaping a harvest is a gap of time, right? We're not going to plant a seed and tomorrow we're going to have a plant that we can eat from. You know, even sprouts, because I've done some sprouting, like sprouting some broccoli seeds. It takes a little minute for them to germinate. It takes a couple of days, you know, and it takes a certain process to happen to care for those seeds so that they can sprout. So that's water, that's sunshine. You know, if you're doing hydro, you know, hydroponic type, there's a certain, there's water involved. It needs minerals. It needs time. And we do this and we go to the doctor, right? And we still have no relief. So we get another pill and then we go back to the doctor and the doctor may put us on a stronger pill and we go, but are we asking the right questions of ourselves, of our bodies? Are we listening to them? And are we even asking the doctor, hey, is it necessary that I take this? Is there a natural alternative? What are the side effects to this thing? Because maybe the side effects to that thing that you may be able to help with diet and lifestyle, like aka getting sleep, um, maybe, you know, maybe the thing that your body needs most is not necessarily a pill to not feel the thing, but a food or a lifestyle change to support the thing that you want. In order to feel rested, again, you must sleep, right? This is a God design. I'm not making this up. Science can't, <laughs> you know what I mean, um, erase this fact. This is an absolute. If we do not sleep, we will die. The body has to recover. It cleans the brain. New cells are made. Um, we're talking about literal growth hormones are created while we're sleeping, as well as other hormones that are on a cycle. We are like, to me, we work against ourselves so many times when it can take something a lot more simple but that simplicity is going to take intentionality and it's going to take um, the room and the, it's going to take the space to create that for yourself. So if you are always exhausted before you go trying to lose weight, before you go trying to um, manage stress better, before you go trying to do whatever the next thing is that you think will be the magic beanstalk pill you have to actually support yourself with the right environment and with the right nutrients in the working in the season that you are in and holistically looking at your life and what you need. Many of us don't even know what that is, but I can tell you right now, if you're tired, you need sleep. <laughs> Seriously, you need deep sleep and you may need to sacrifice something and it may feel quote unquote extreme to you but what's a worse extreme it may feel extreme to you to dial back your caffeine because caffeine has a half-life instead of continuously reaching for it because you're tired give your body what it needs it doesn't need a stimulant it needs sleep so as we are you know Oh, I, I want to, you know, I want to lose weight or I want to, um, I want my hair to grow or I want my skin to not be dry or I want all these things that we want. We keep doing these topical superficial things instead of plucking the weeds that are currently there. And those weeds may be screen time. Those weeds may be coffee after, you know, 12 or 1 p.m. It has a half life. <laughs> You've got five hours that that caffeine is still in your system after you drink it. It has a half-life. Um, and it gets even deeper than that. And I use that specifically because I know that that affects so many of us. And so many of us have um, turned to coffee instead of turning to our pillow. And how do we deal with stress better if we are not sleeping? How? How? People that are constantly sick are also people that are constantly not resting. 
I feel like I have to say that again. <laughs> people that are constantly sick are people that are not, are oftentimes people that are not resting. Why? Because we are more susceptible to pathogenic opportun- opportunistic, opportunistic, opportunistic bacteria and pathogens that we come across on a daily basis. And if those things are able to get into our system during a time where our body is is out of balance due to not having what it needs, which is rest or nourishment, you know, proper food, nutrients and things of that nature, then what ends up happening is we get sick and we get sick often because our immune systems have been compromised. Also, if we have gut issues, our immune system gets compromised. I was listening to something recently and it was a naturopathic doctor and she was, she was a, um, um, I'm sorry, a naturopathic doctor. She became a naturopathic doctor, but she started in gastroenterology. And when she did that, she said she was constantly giving out pills for different things. And she said that there was a lot of stu- a lot of studies that were done. And most people don't know this, but people that ended up with um, really bad um, effects of the sickness that went around that we <laughs> shall not name, um, what they experienced I mean, what the, the the trials are showing is that those people were fivefold, sometimes more likely to get sick because their body was compromised, their immune system was compromised in their gut. And we have heard this, you know, over the last maybe five or eight years since we've learned so much about gut bacteria and the gut microbiota, the gut microbiome, we know that our immune system sits right on the, which makes sense. Look at your body. You know, if you look at your body, your torso, the middle of your body, everything has to go through this section of your body. All that, in, all the, the, all the feet of your intestines, all of those things where we're absorbing our nutrients, where we're taking in our food, where we're also taking in bacteria from the outside world, good and bad. And if we have systems that are compromised, due to eating things that are really, really inflammatory, I'll get into that in another um, episode, we end up extremely sick because our bodies literally cannot do what it normally needs to do and also have this, you know, we don't have this thriving immune system in our gut because of the different things that we're exposing our gut to. And that can be a myriad of things. One of the things is artificial sweeteners. You know, it literally kills off um, some of our good bacteria. And we can create a system where we have a a lot more bad bacteria than we have good. And the bad is literally outweighing the good. Um, They're microbes, they're microscopic, but outweighing (laughs) the good bacteria that we have that fights and keeps these this system in balance because our immune system is right there so when we cause issues to our gut and to our gut lining what ends up happening is these pathogenic opportunist opportunistic <laughs> use words bacteria get into our bodies what ends up happening is we end up sick and we end up sicker than the next person because where their body was able to fight and their immune system was able to fight and they're not compromised in that way our bodies aren't So that's just how environment is super, super important. Taking care of our body and giving it its bare minimum what it needs is foundational and working on food, real food foundations, real health foundations so that our bodies can actually, um, you know, we got to, we have to pluck out those weeds. And a lot of times with many of us, which is why I practice holistic nutrition is because we are not looking at lifestyle factors. We just want to throw a pill at something or we just want to do um, this one thing. And it can start with one thing, but we have to intentionally pluck out those weeds that are hindering our bodies and hindering our immune systems from fighting (laughs) the good fight of health, right? Like we have to intentionally do this. It will not happen by accident and we need to stop going to extremes before we focus on foundations we have to or else we end up in this cycle if you have migraines all the time if we never get to i'm using this for an example if we never get to the root cause of those migraines 
then all we do is exacerbate the problem because now we're going to probably take a pill chronically, con- you know, continuously bringing that into our lives that there are no med- And I heard a doctor say this, a pharmacist say this, there is no such thing as a side effect free pharmaceutical. There is no such thing as a 100% safe pharmaceutical, which is why when you go to the pharmacy counter, sometimes you get pulled to the side because you need to talk about drug interactions, some herbs that you can't take because you take this or that, some different lifestyle things that you need to watch out for. Like you can't take this pill and then, you know, drive or make, you know, any um, really important decisions. Um, they come with side effects. She said there's no such thing as a side effect free pharmaceutical. You get that little pamphlet that is stapled on to your pills and it's not just telling you you know um what to eat with it or to eat with it that's part of it because that'll also be printed on the label on the bottle but it will also tell you all the different interactions and side effects that this thing may have because they need to warn you because that's their disclaimer hey if you take this this might happen to you or this may be be or become an issue for you also many of these pharmaceuticals that we're taking have not been in clinical trials. I'm doing I'm doing more research on this, so don't quote me. But I, I believe I read somewhere that clinical trials, um, they happen over a particular window of time and many of them are not tested um, for longevity. They're not tested for you to be on them lo- for, the, for the rest of your life. Most of them. Um, seriously, think about that for a moment. And how many people do you know that are taking something? You can go in and pick up ibuprofen or, or, um, um, what's the other one? Anyways, you can pick up an OTC medication right now for your headache or for a pain or a toothache or whatever. If you read the back of that aspirin or the back of that, whatever it is you may be picking up, do you know that most of them say don't take for longer than three to four days? Most of them say that. How many people do you know go every single day popping a pill? You may be one of them. And none of this is condemnation. None of this is to say, nor am I saying don't take what you're taking. That is your personal decision. But I always want to encourage you to be um, informed and to make informed, you know, informed decisions about the things that you are exposing yourself to. Because many of these things they they um will say may cause bleeding in your gastrointestinal tract that's scary our immune system is right there so we're taking all of these things haphazardly and just because you can doesn't mean that you should and just because you should take them for a small amount of time doesn't mean you should take them forever so a lot of times it's working with the person that is on your care team remembering that your doctor works for you And that just because they went to school for I don't know how many years does not mean that they have more insight on your body than you do. And that when you are, they should be working with you. They should be talking to you. They should not be talking down to you. If they are, get a new doctor. Go somewhere else. That person is there to work for you. And I don't say that in like some like, oh, they're working for you. Like you're bigger than them. I'm not saying it in that way. I'm saying literally you're paying them. You are literally paying them. And in what other situation do we put our lives and our our health in someone else's hands without asking questions first? And if that doctor does not have the answers that you need, find someone else that will listen and work with you. Right. Work for you and work with you, work for you to help you find answers to get to root cause. I would encourage you to find a functional medicine doctor, an integrative doctor who looks at the entire body, um, you know, a some sort of functional practitioner, because it is getting it's, it's getting wild out here in these streets. <laughs> it really is. And when I have family members that are going to, you know, doctors all the time. And when I say all the time, I mean several times type, times a week, sometimes several times a month. And they're getting a new prescription or a new and it's getting added on and questions. And I'm always encouraging them, you know, ask questions. 
Ask what would happen if you stopped taking such and such. Ask what would happen, how long do you have to be on something? Ask, are there any alternatives? So when someone gives you a pill and they say, take this, and you ask questions like, is there another way? And they give you an absolute answer where it's like, no, there's no other way. Find somebody else. Find somebody else because you do not have a one size fits all body. And we should not have one size fits all all approaches to our wellness. There are things that work across the board for every single last one of us. And that is eating real whole food, getting sunshine, having our macronutrients met, having our micronutrients met, having our minerals, you know, repleted. Um, There's so many things and there's such a complex. So if, if our bodies are this complex, how can one pill be the answer to your wellness? There's no cure at the end of the pill that you're taking. Typically, it just comes with other side effects. You're not meant to be on it for the rest of your life. Um, Again, talk to your doctor about this. I'm stating my opinions. And there is some something that the body is out of balance. And if we are just treating symptoms and we are not doing preventative measures, we are not trying to work holistically with our entire lifestyles. If I go to a doctor and say, I'm I'm tired, I'm tired, I can't, I can't seem to get sleep, they might give me a sleeping pill. Okay, but at what point can I get to a place where I don't have to take this every single night to go to sleep? That is a natural thing I'm supposed to be able to do. So what's the cause here? If we don't find the cause, we'll never understand the effect. We'll never un- understand why we are experiencing it. So then we'll just try to um, remove the effect. But the cause is still there. The cause is still there. So all of these things to say, it is so important that we focus on our entire body system, that we don't go to some extreme when really we need to use that extreme energy to um, intentionally place right foundations down for ourselves. Sometimes we just have really, really stinking bad habits. And because of that, we have thrown our body into an imbalanced state, which is allowing for a lot of other things to not function properly, which is allowing us to get sick quicker, stay sick longer, get sick more often, and end up with these chronic issues. And the reason why a lot of us have chronic issues was because We've never digged up, dug up the weeds of our lives and we are not giving our body what it needs. We are like that plant that maybe, you know, if you feel great just some of the time, you know, it's like that, that, that gardener that never watered their plants. Um, but God is good and it still rains and they're able to just get a little bit of a bloom. Oh, oh, we grew a couple of inches down in our roots, you know? It's safe to kind of come out through the surface a little bit more through the soil because we're getting something that we need, not based on this, <laughs> you know, this this gardener, but but based on the fact that God, you know, um, allowed it to rain. And for many of us, that is the way that our health and our wellness is. We feel okay sometimes. And don't get me wrong. I get it. There are things that we have chronic issues with. I have some chronic issues. We'll talk about that in another episode. Um, There are things that we cannot help, right? It rains on the just and the unjust. You know, all things, you know, this is a fallen world and different things are going to happen in our lives. However, God has also given us um, the ability to learn, the ability to ask questions, right? We get to ask questions of God. We get to pray. We get to seek God for answers. You know, we can pray and we can fast and we can ask God for directions. And it doesn't mean that we're going to be delivered from every single thing that we experience, but it does mean that we can go to him. And it does mean that he can be right there with us. And I truly believe that we talk about this abundant life. And I know so many people who love God that are so sick. And there are, you know, people that I love that I just want to just spout off a million and one different things to them that I know would be helpful. But there, I can't get past the things that they're not willing to do. Just like, you know, when 
God, you know, moves upon our hearts. No one else can do that. It, it has to be God's spirit. But it, we have to be willing. And people have to be willing. I can't force, you know, any of the things that I've learned on someone else as much as I can't force it on, <laughs> you know, um, you get what I'm saying. You, you hear where I'm going with all of this. But I hope that if you heard nothing else that I said, that you heard that if your body... We're in different seasons. Like, let me say this too, this caveat. We're in different seasons where we w- we may not get rest, okay? New moms know this. Moms of babies know this. Um, people that are in the military know this. People that are um, taking care of sick loved ones know this. People that have their own chronic issues understand this, right? I get it. There are some chronic issues that we have but we can still give our bodies the things that it needs. And we can still rely on foundations over conveniences. And we can still um, go to God with all of these things, asking him for wisdom in our lives and in our lifestyles and the different things that we are trying to, you know, reap a harvest of. That we are the goals that we are after and just wanting to feel well, Right. So I just want to throw that caveat in there. We're going to get sick. This is a fallen world, right? But God has even created our systems. Hello, he gave us an immune system to combat those things. But the more we are not digging up those weeds in our lives, and we're not looking at the lifestyle factors that are playing a part in the things that we are suffering with chronically, a magic pill, it, it doesn't exist. I just want to tell you, like it doesn't exist. And don't get me wrong, I'm going to do a whole episode on amazing supplements that we can take because of the things that we've done to the land and how because of big, you know, agriculture, uh, agriculture that we are not rotating the land as we should and we are just degradating our soil and the minerals that are in there. So there are things that, yes, we do need to ingest because we're just not getting that. So supplement, (laughs) you know, certain things that we can't get or we're not getting enough in our diet for our bodies to be in balance and function well, right? I'm a big believer in supplementation, but purposeful and in proper context. I don't think anyone should just be taking anything because you saw an ad, a saw you saw an ad somewhere that it was good for you. That's a whole another thing. I just want to encourage you in this: focus on foundations first, because without that, whatever you are trying to grow will not stand. If you are allowing these weeds of your lifestyle and the different things that you are not intentionally working with before you're asking your body to do all these other things that's where we need to start so what are the weeds in your life um i would love to hear about it you can send me an email hello at style and stewardship.com subject line pod questions i would love to hear what are the weeds in your life what are some things and some challenges that you are experiencing in your health and your wellness that you know, you know, you are playing a part in, like, let's just be adults about this. Sometimes we're playing a part (laughs) in our wellness for the things that we can help. So what are those things for you? I know for me, personally, I have a lot of food sensitivities. And I am I don't know if you've heard me through during this episode, but I've been sniffling a lot. And I actually have a chronic condition that has to do with allergies. I'll talk about that in another episode, because I finally have a name for it. But I, you know, there's certain things like last night, I ate some green peas with dinner. I shouldn't have done that. I was up from 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. sneezing, literally. We'll talk about that another time. But I wanted peas for whatever reason. Um, And I had a feeling I wasn't going to sleep well. And that is exactly what happened. That was something I brought on myself, right? So that's just an example. I'm right there with you trying to steward this body well, trying to steward my wellness on purpose and trying to live intentionally with the things that I understand to do. And I want to, I want to help and encourage you to do the same. And it is something that it is a day to day work. There are no magic pills here. And if you have a doctor that is not listening to you or one that you are not getting results with, we like to be for whatever reason, Um, loyal to things that are not working for us. Not sure why that is. Um, This person has been my doctor since I was two. Okay, but 
how's that working for you other you know other than them listen you know and then you have doctors that listen that just don't do anything more than that and it's like okay is this a counseling session or can you actually point me to and help me find a root cause there are reasons for that we can talk about that in another episode don't hear me say don't go to the to your doctor don't hear me say don't take something if you don't feel well and please don't hear me say that i know better than your doctor because i don't i'm encouraging you to be your own um advocate when it comes to that but you have to get to know your body its needs and um let's let's dig up some of the weeds of our lifestyles that just if you're not getting sleep i'd love to to hear about that (laughs) and and why you know um are you sometimes we're you know we're doing the all the right quote-unquote things and we're not getting the results that we want we're not reaping that harvest because that's not what our body needs Um, We're doing things sometimes that don't even fit our lives or in the right context of what's best for us. And it takes time to learn what that is. And you're not alone in that. I am right there with you. And if I can be of help in any way, again, you can send your questions in. Um, I have been trying to answer the questions that have come in um, on video podcasts. So you can listen to um, the last episode was episode 75. And I answered a question about, you know, different things that you can do to support your child or yourself who may have ADHD, ADD, which it's all called ADHD now, Um, you know, and and different lifestyle things that you can do, different food things that you can do to support. And I love answering questions like that because I want to help you use what's in front of you to better your life, right? We can't be consistent with things that we, we do once in a while. We're consistent with things that we do consistently intentionally and on purpose so i just want to encourage you to take your wellness into your own hands and all the things that you can control and i guarantee you it's a lot more than you believe and it's a lot more than you think so there's so many more things that i could say but i should probably put a pin right there put a pin in it (laughs) until the next episode so i just want to encourage you Your life matters. What you do with it matters. So what will you steward well? Peace.